90s. People and ideas on videotape by independent producers from around the world. Whenever a new technology for communications develops, government tries to impose stricter regulation upon expression in that medium than it did in previous ones. You know, so print was well protected by the First Amendment. Everybody understood, as was public speech. Radio and television come along, and on the pretext of limited bandwidth, the government succeeded in sharply limiting what you can do and say on radio and television. And we're afraid that the, that the same scenario is getting played out with computer, or with digital media. Uh, in this case, it's not limited bandwidth, it's intellectual property that's the pretext. It's proprietary data, it's uh, the possibility that, that what is being conveyed is, 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 is stolen property rather than free speech. Uh, and under that pretext, then they are trying to regulate uh, digital conversation because it might contain somebody else's property. The human race seems to be moving onto the map in a sense. I mean, it's moving off the landscape. It's moving out of the world of material properties and moving into this completely computer-generated and mediated field of, of platonic existence. In the process of doing this, it's trying to take a lot of its old cultural metaphors with it. For example, with regard to property, I mean, it, you, institutions have have understandings about what property is based on many years of dealing with tangible goods. I mean, if, if, if I steal your horse, you don't have your horse anymore. And I do. And that kind of metaphor doesn't apply very well to intellectual property. In fact, it doesn't apply at all. Because I can steal your horse in that, in that sense, and you still have it, I can reproduce your horse a million times, and not only have I not necessarily diminished the value of your horse, I may have turned your horse into the standard for horses. I mean, you can make a pretty good case that, uh, that Lotus 123 became the standard uh, for spreadsheets, which is almost unassailable and iron standard in spite of the fact that there have been many advances in that field since, since uh, Mitch Kapor came up with that on the basis of the fact that it was probably the most pirated computer program of all time. By the same token, the Grateful Dead, for whom I write songs, has always had an extremely slack understanding of its intellectual property and, and willingness to, to uh, disseminate it. Uh, so we let people tape all of our concerts, and I think this has actually been instrumental in increasing our record sales. To get back to intellectual property for a moment, uh, after a period of time, we're going to start to understand what this stuff is and deal with it accordingly. Uh, but it's just going to take a major cultural shift. And then the law, which, is, which proceeds at a pace that is second only to geology and its deliberation, is going to have to follow that. But right now, I mean, you have this incredible divergence between publicly accepted practice with software, for example, and the law, which is staying, staying steady. I mean, people use uh, software and reproduce it uh, in a way that has no moral stigma attached to reproduction. I mean, people, people pirate programs, they pirate videotapes, they pirate uh, audio cassettes. There's, you, to admit to your friends that you have pirated one of these electronic media, is to, is to incur no shame whatsoever. But the law is over here saying it's wrong. Well, you know, obviously a problem is going to come up, a series of problems, and there's going to be a, a lot of, uh, well, a lot of lawyers are going to make a lot of money for quite a while. 